So Absolutely. Hello. Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It is nice to see all your faces again. It's been about a couple months. We skipped August because of the start of the semester. I hope everybody's start of the semester was as smooth as possible. Um, but we're back here for a couple months before we need to take another break for the holidays. So welcome to our September 2024 monthly webinar. Uh, I see some new faces here, which is excited, or some new names. That's really exciting. Uh, we're uh, happy to have Jason and Phil from iTech. They're going to be redoing their um, STC, our SUNY Technology Conference 2024 presentation on Team Dynamics. Uh, which I know is of interest to a lot of our campuses as more and more campuses are using Team Dynamics to manage their project management. So just a little bit of an intro here. Uh, if you're new, this is who we are. Not going to read it. Uh, but we really try to help the project management community in SUNY. Uh, we have very few campuses that have PMOs or project management offices or an official project manager by title, but we all know that to some extent, we all do a little bit of project management, even if it is just task management for yourself and the things you have going on. So uh, we really want to help uh, cultivate those talents within SUNY and enable you to manage your projects more effectively. The monthly webinars help with that. Uh, we do have a listserv so that people can um, post to different things. There's been a couple different ones that have come out here the past month. Uh, and then again, some low cost and free training opportunities for those people that are in those project management positions or looking to extend their project management abilities. So, um, so like I was saying, this is the first month that I am without Krista. She's now an emeritus uh, moderator. I got to update this slide. Um, so she has moved down to only working a couple of days a week and Thursday is not one of them. So it's just me for a little bit. I will be looking for some uh, people to help out maybe on a part-time basis uh, coming forward. I always like to have lots of subject matter experts come to these meetings because uh, I like to see what's going on and share those uh, experiences that we have across Susie when it comes to project management. So, but if you need to reach me, there's my information. Uh, so like I said, we do have, oh, whoops, I did not mean to do that. Sorry, hold on. Hmm. Uh, we do have Jason Polk and Phil Vecchione um, from iTech. Um, they're going to be talking about today managing project resource allocation and team dynamics. Uh, it was a great presentation at STC. Uh, we know lots of people are using team dynamics, and this is another way that you can plan out ahead of time to make sure that your upcoming projects are as successful as possible. Um, so we're excited for this one. Uh, finally, uh, we do have our upcoming monthly webinars coming up, um, just to let you know. Uh, next month, we also have a redo of an STC presentation. David Acker is going to be with us. He's from Stony Brook University. He did a great presentation on building a more effective team through empowerment and trust. So we'd love to have you here with us again. Uh, we skipped November and December due to the holidays, and then we're back again in January. So I'm working on some different things that we're going to do for January, and I will have more information for that coming out. So definitely put the October monthly webinar on your calendar and then the January one as well. So you get lots of professional development and project management. And finally, uh, we do still have some training opportunities available. Uh, we have a couple classes in project management fundamentals. If you're looking for that for yourself or somebody else in your office, uh, we've got uh, one in the end of October and one in the beginning of November. The registration line is available there. And as well, um, we will have an advanced project management, which is the follow-up to our PMF class. The dates have been decided November 21st and then Thursday, December 1st. Uh, registration will be opening up here soon. Uh, if you're aware of it, CPD is uh, working with the new registration system. So there's a little bit of bumps as we get used to it and make sure we're using it in a proper manner. So now, without further ado, I am going to turn this over to Jason. Great. Thank you. Well, thanks, everyone. I appreciate everybody joining uh, me here today on this. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, make sure I'm sharing the correct one. Mm 
my head. Hold on a second. Sorry. Uh, let's do this. Okay. Uh... Chris, we're not, I'm having difficulty being able to share my screen for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, that's interesting. I gave you yeah. permissions. I gave everybody yeah. permissions to share. Do you want to send me your slides and I'll share them for you? Sure. Let me do that. Yeah, drop them in the email. I'll pull them up. Okay. Thank you. Very odd. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's some Chrome extension or something. I don't know. Yeah. Are you on an Apple? Yeah. Yeah, there's something that you have to enable in your security settings to let Zoom share. That would be why. This will probably be easier for me just to ping this over to you. So Yeah, uh, I'll send you the link so. though for it so that you have it next time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have that Sorry. problem all the time. <laughs> Sorry for the delay, everyone. We will start here momentarily. While I'm doing that, let me just give you a quick background on, on who I am and, and my experience here. So I've been, my name is Jason Polk. I've been here at iTech for about a year and a half now. <clears throat> Prior to that, I've worked 20 years in the private sector. Um, so I'm one of those that actually learned how to, <clears throat> how the world of IT and project management works prior to the onset of coming in and working here for the state and specifically for SUNY. Um, I spent many years in many different uh, IT role backgrounds. I was a business analyst for many years. I was a computer programmer, and then I spent time working for small software companies, learning the traits of management, of implementation, um, of project management before working for a couple larger companies, and then finally coming back here to SUNY here um, not that long ago. <clears throat> Chris, I just sent it over to you, so you should have that now. waiting for it to come through my email sorry okay no no worries um in addition to to that i also have phil vecchione here that's also on the call here phil's also one of our other uh, project managers that's here at itech as well uh phil has been here for close to 14 years just as long as krista has so phil actually preceded krista about two weeks before she came aboard the company um so yeah, it's like the age of twins, right? Like I'm the oldest <laughs> twin by two weeks. There you go. And then we also have uh, one more, Ralph. So yeah, Ralph. Technically, we were triplets. We were all hired at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah, just to buy you a few more minutes there, Jason. Um, I'm Phil Vecchione. I'm one of the project managers at iTech. Um, actually, one of the founding project managers at iTech when iTech first formed its PMO uh, back in 2010. Um, I was a project manager for a couple of years before that, um, and since then, um, I have been um, working away on all sorts of um, projects for iTech, um, and mostly I manage the technology portfolio, so most of my projects are um, heavily technology-based, but I am known to dabble in um, a security project or a service project uh, every now and then. Jason, it doesn't seem to be coming through. Do you want, is it in your OneDrive? Can you share a OneDrive link? Yeah. You know what, Chris? I think, actually, you know what? I think, Jason, is it um, is it on SharePoint? Because I could just grab it and open it up real quick. Yeah. If, if you have okay. it, Phil, and you want to share it, that would actually make it better, and then I can talk through it. So. I mean, I'm going to um, use, I'm going to send up the slides later in PDF form for you anyways. So. Okay. It's not wasted time. While we're doing that, let, let me go ahead and let's talk a little bit about uh, iTech here and, and what and what we've what our history is for this. Um, and I, and there'll be some back end slides on this as, as I'm bringing it up. So resource allocation has been an ongoing item here at iTech for quite some time. We've we um, we we've been always been able to manage and track um, resources and sort of what people have been working on as an organization, um, but we've always run into issues and constraints when it comes to 
sort of helping us to go ahead and manage across timelines and things like that. Great. Thanks, Phil. Okay. Um, so, Phil, if you could go ahead and, and go to the next slide, that will be uh, super. Okay. So it's just a quick safe harbor statement saying that I know everything within here, within our presentation is for, to our best knowledge, everything to be truthful um, and, you know, do not reflect the opinions of anybody outside of this presentation. Okay, so let's talk about the history. Um, so here at iTech, as, as I was saying, right, you know, team leads uh, currently track and review the available list of the resources and, and they they sort of go ahead to tend to and, and manage the day-to-day -day operations of what's going on within their team. Um, and in most of everything, the individuals here at iTech tend to fall into a couple different buckets. It's, you know, are they working on any sort of approved iTech projects that they're working on? Um, what are they doing from an operations standpoint and any sort of support that they're providing to our customers, which mostly are in our campuses, right? And across those lines, obviously, we've risen across and we've found across some challenges that we've had, right? Most of those being timeline constraints, you know, projects, scope creep along those lines. Some resources were found to be overcommitted or undercommitted. We kept finding ourselves that anytime we need to get something done here at iTech, we kept going back to the same well. We kept going back to the same person because Jim Smith knows how, knows how to do that project and Jim can get it done in three weeks as opposed to, you know, Molly Sue, who's brand new, it might take a month. We also found that um, some people were, were really based upon, you know, that previous statement, were really doing the work of one and a half or two times, two full-time associates here at iTech. And um, it, it just wasn't really working out before. So we said, we realized that we recognized that we need to do something about resource management. Um, we came to projects and we had to uh, look into that. So, next slide, Phil. Thanks. So, uh, needless to say, this wasn't the first time. We've tried this before. <clears throat> um, we, um, and every time, you know, it was, we ran into a couple of different issues, whether it be like software shortcomings or we simply just weren't getting enough buy in from the organization across the board. Uh, yeah, that sounds great. Um, that's something that we should do, but we just don't have the capacity or the availability to do so. So as I said, right, our previous model was none, right? When, when it came to trying to figure out and go ahead as, you know, what was a higher recommend, what requirement or what was going on, we had no true tracking way of knowing exactly what one person was going on or any system where somebody could go in and actually look at and say exactly what that person was working on at any given time. So we recognized that we had to do that. So in order for us to get there, we decided we, when, when I when I came across here at iTech uh, back last year, we went into we put ourselves into what we're referring to as like an interim phase. And and in that interim phase, right, we had to sort of start to think about how we wanted to do this. What was our process? We knew what we wanted to do. So we said we, we basically treated this like as a project itself. We knew that the existing problem, what it what was, and how we needed to get there. So first thing that we did across the organization is we met with the team leads and the senior leadership here at iTech to go ahead and review and, and, and identify what individuals were working on on a daily basis. Meaning, what are they doing in the day? How are they how are they working within their day? And we recognized and realized that when it came to individuals, they sort of work their way into sort of different buckets, as I, as I mentioned before. There's work that they're doing that's keeping the lights on, their day-to-day -day operations. Uh, any support that they're working on, they also have projects that we're committed to. And, you know, obviously, for some reason, we do allow people to take vacations and time away from other projects. So we took all that initial information that we gathered it, and we put it into a pretty robust spreadsheet. And the press spreadsheet worked great. It was actually pretty, it was, it was pretty easy for us to use. Um, but the only problem was, is a lot of manual, manual work where we, anytime a new project was updated, anytime project timelines were extended, anytime that there was any sort of extensions or new resources being added to a project, we would have to manually go into the spreadsheet and update it. But it did allow us some visibility and allowed us the ability to go ahead and take a look at a resource by their name and obviously see where where somebody may or may not be overcommitted to a project. So it was a good starting off jumping point for us to begin in, but we knew that there was a way for us to go ahead and make this better. And, and we were in the process of transitioning from um, service now to team dynamics. And we knew that that was an opportunity for us. So in order before we got into that jumping 
case where we started to how we're going to roll this out with the team dynamics, we had to make a few assumptions. And obviously, we had to start to think about from an assumption standpoint how we were going to go ahead and think about how we're doing this. Right? Is we we needed to, in essence, in many ways, compare and contrast the quantitative way that we were doing something versus the qualitative way. Right? Are we taking too? Are we taking on too much, or is there a better way for us to do this? And so we, what we did is we decided to take the amount of work that each individual person was doing, and we broke it down to three specific categories. Within those three categories, we obviously made the assumption as well that each individual person works a five-day work week, seven and a half hours a day, unless otherwise, unless otherwise determined based upon a part-time associate or somebody. That's sort of our starting jumping off point. And then within there, we had, like I said, we have three categories, KTLO, or keeping the lights on. This is, this is sort of the overhead bucket. This is checking email, switching between tasks, talking with coworkers, filling out timesheets, uh, attending team meetings or, or um, meetings related to not a operations or project task, celebrating someone's early retirement, like Gabe just left us yesterday. Um, anything along those lines of the KTLO. Something that falls into the operation support bucket would be anything reporting to instances, incidents dealing with you know sub one situations maintaining any any type of ongoing services internal external and doing additional work that might be needed within a department or team and then anything falls into the third bucket which is our project project cis bucket which is anything where a team member is assigned to a specific cis engagement which is one of the engagements that we have with one of our campuses or they're attached and working on a specific itech approved project And this is just a slide that sort of goes into that further detail. But one of the things that we said across the board is that within that seven and a half hour workday, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the assumption that at least two hours are set aside each day for that KTLO overhead. And that the remaining five and a half hours in that person's day is going to be based upon how much time that that person is committing to support operations versus projects. So for example, a project manager may spend more of their time obviously working on projects and less on support and operations, whereas somebody within our operations in our OS department or our infrastructure team might be more dedicated to you know, support and operations as opposed to less than projects. Um, so we took all that, that was, a, that was able to give us a full breakdown. And then that'll lead us right to our next slide, which is that we obviously realized that not all resources across the board here at iTech have the same same breakdown. We may have some resources, as I said, that spend more time on operational support, maybe more on projects. And that's that's gonna be the exact same case as it is within departments as well, right? We may have somebody within our OS department that works directly on new projects and new development and one that's just working on management and maintenance. So in order for us to sort of talk about that, I think it's important for us here at iTech to talk about our project life cycle. And if you've, you've attended Wizard before in the past, or you may have listened to one of Chris or Phil's previous conversations, we may have talked about how a simple project request ends up becoming a project here at iTech. And, and I'll go ahead and I'll, and I'll sort of briefly highlight, highlight, go through this at a higher level, just so everyone's aware of it. But for us, uh, obviously, we get a project request, you know, that request comes in, hey, you know, we're looking to implement a new uh, networking security system at one of our campuses great. So that project request has gone ahead and created. It then moves into our initiation phase. And initiation phase, think of it as sort of our main phase where we go ahead and we go and we do all of the, the background and exploration work, defining what's in scope, what's out of scope, um, how much of an effort it's going to be, what kind of resources, what capacity it's going to be, what risk is associated to the project, um, many factors that one would go through like a, a regular project life cycle. Identify how we're going to go ahead and proceed forward with that project, whether we're going to follow a standard um, waterfall methodology. Is this a small or large project, or is this an agile project where we're going to go ahead and, and go through a, a, an agile approach for this project? That project then would move through into an execution phase, where then it would be managed by either a team lead, if it's a small effort, or a large project by a project manager, or through an agile approach. And then obviously, then we would move that project into closing. To further dive a little bit deeper then into that project initiation phase, where we found most of our access here at iTech 
is that if we're able to actually do most of our prep work as part of our initiation phase, we have found a greater success in actually com completing projects on time, successful, and with little to do um, on hold and failure. So we, 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 we built a more robust project intake. I think last year at our um, one of our wizard conference, our wizard conference, Phil actually went to detail on this, but I'll, but a high level, I'll just I'll just talk about this. So obviously, you know, we're creating that initial request. That request might come from a client portal or it might come from the internal resource. As I mentioned, you know, within team dynamics, the portfolio managers and the subject matter experts are building out that initial request. We submit it to through an approval process um, on a weekly basis. That request that is reviewed and discussed by the project manager or portfolio owner and the senior leadership team. That request then is reviewed and approved. If it's approved, it then goes into resourcing. And resourcing is then led by the resource manager, which is myself, um, along with the other project managers, where then we meet with all the team leads and we take a look at some of the tools that we're gonna talk about, as well as you know current capacity for associates or resources to see if there's somebody that's available. Like, for example, we may know that we need a DBA for this project for six weeks. It's going to be 30 hour work effort this person has the capacity to take on this work. Is this person a resource that's available to take on it? Um, at any point, obviously through our project intake process, we may send it back down the line. Um, this is not necessarily always a one-way road where we may need additional information before it goes to senior leadership. They may say, this sounds great. We may we don't want to take this as on as a new project. So it, it just it, it sits in our, our backlog of our, um, and we review those on a quarterly basis with the portfolio owner. Um, or it gets to resource review and we say, you know, this is a project that looks great. This is something we want to do. We just don't have the capacity right now within our department to take on this work. Assuming, though, that we do have all the resources available and it's approved by senior leadership to move forward, then we've, then we've done all that work. It simply goes to CIO, you know, Mike Notorious for, for approval. Um, Mike basically then rubber stamps it because not necessarily, he may not, but in 90% in of the situations, he usually will. He'll come back to the PMO for for questions, um, and then that will then move directly into project initiation, where we'll formally kick the project off, prepare, create our um, our workflow, and move it into there. I'll stop there. I don't know if anybody here on the PMO has, has seen this before, has any maybe possible questions at all about our project intake or you know project planning. But before I jump into um, that, or Phil, if there's anything that you may want to add from a color commentary standpoint, please please do so. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, um, while the overall process looks um, pretty detailed, uh, it takes, um, on average, uh, just under two weeks from a request um, initially being put together, uh, or I should say a request being submitted for consideration. It takes just under two weeks to get it um, into a uh, project. Um, we meet weekly for both the re um, request review and the resource team. So those teams meet weekly if there's any um, items for review. Uh, so we, we try to move these along pretty quickly. Um, and our even our request isn't terribly rigorous. Like you do have to put a, a certain amount of information in, but it's not, um, it's not, I, I wanna say it's not terribly lengthy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Phil. Oh, uh, it looks like Joe's asking a question. So usually, Joel, um, what we would do in that situation is we would do one of two things. Um, so the question, I don't know if everyone here saw in the chat, Joe asked, if a project is deemed to have merit, but it's determined that they're not adding enough adequate resource at the time, how is that typically handled? And, and this has happened actually before in the past. Um, we've done one of two things. We've we've left a project in, in the status that we've, we've, we've gone ahead and now with with the functionality about the last six, seven months of, of data we've had, we've gone out and we've been able to look and see, okay, when do we have available resources available to begin this project, right? And if if it's something, but also we have to determine, you know, the overall scope or the overall, um, wait, not scope, I'm sorry, the, the overall high level of, of um, the project, project priority, right? Is this project itself a project that is a higher priority than the ongoing existing projects? And if the answer is yes, and it has to take precedence as a 
high project over some of the existing ones, what do we need to do? Do we can, can we can the timelines be shifted? Is this a project that itself has can start in three months out from now? Is this a higher project than existing ones? Are there existing projects themselves that can be put on hold? And and those and those so those are all different conversations that we've had. Um, we've also said that if it's if the severity of a project is not as high, it's it's a nice to have. Maybe it's a medium priority. Um, has to be done within the next six months. You know, we may, we may go through our entire intake process, approve it, but then we may not start the project till November, when available resources are available and we know that people can commit to that project. Um, but that's how we've done. Phil, is there anything else I think that you want to add to how if we don't have available resources? Within sure. Something? Yeah. In fact, actually, that like we kind of want that to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. If it, you know, if it is an actual problem, like we we actually want that to come up in a meeting. Our general philosophy in, in our PMO is that um, problems get solved with conversations. So yeah. uh, we don't have an algorithm that sorts that out. Like if two project, if a project request is coming in and needs resources um, that we can't, um, we can't find other resources for, like the person who's needed is a subject matter expert on an existing ongoing project and this request. Uh, then what we do is we just gather up all of the uh, necessary people. So we gather the project manager, um, that person's manager, we'll get um, whoever's portfolio this is in. So whatever um, C-level person is involved. So like if it was in the technology portfolio, Joe Hoot is the portfolio owner. We would get him together and sit down and just have the conversation and um, talk it out, right? Like there's... Um, I don't think there's an easy way to just write an algorithm that says, yeah. hey, if, you know, if there's a collision or if there's a conflict, do X, Y, do Z and just, you know, figure it out on paper. It really gets down to just having a discussion and deciding where the priorities lie. And just like Jason said, can we hold this project off? Um, can we put the other project on hold? Those kinds of things. Those are the, those are the wind up the, being the available choices. And then it really is a decision. And if it can't be made, um, just at the um, portfolio owner level, then we will bring Mike in as the CIO and have him weigh in and say, you know, we need an executive decision here on which way you want to go. Um, but most of the time, what we really try to do is uh, find another person who could do that that project. And even if that means that we're going to buffer a little extra time onto the project, um, if we can't have, you know, our... Um, our particular rock star for that piece of technology, but somebody else knows it as well, we can just factor like a little extra buffer into the project and say, that's great. We'll let that person do it. So yeah, there's no, um, it's, it, it's all conversations. That's great. Thank you both. Sure, John. Okay. Bill, if you want to go to the next slide. So, uh, so one of the tools that we use as part of our project planning, um, we refer to it as a project estimate calculator or project request estimate calculator. And, and, and within this tool, this is what we're utilizing to sort of lay out these steps or, or the deliverables that are within scope. Uh, what roles or multiple roles, if it's, if it's the same role itself, is needed uh, for the project, what the what the sort of the hour allocation breakdown for those tasks to be completed are, um, and helps us sort of lay out and, and define sort of what what the project length of the project is. With within this too, you may also see a field located near the bottom of the project. It's called Project Slack. We we spoke about this maybe before in the past, but Project Slack is an item obviously that we use here at iTech to help us sort of manage the unexpected. Right? Maybe there's there's due to a vacation a the seven one incident a situation where a specific task within a project is just being delayed. In order for us to help manage us here as project managers at iTech, we, we built in Project Slack as an item where we senior leadership has allowed us to extend timelines without having to go back directly to that portfolio owner, that team lead, and asking for that resources to have additional time on that project. So any of our projects, we, we usually are building in a 30% minimum of, of Slack and Obviously, there's, if there's factors within a project itself that may have unknowns, whether we're dealing directly with an external resource or a vendor, you know, we may increase that slack to allow us a little bit of buffer on the project so that, in essence, our overall timeline might be something like an eight or nine-week project. 
we build in two, three weeks of slack time to allow us to go ahead and extend that project if we need to. And obviously the expectation is, is that uh, some projects will use some form of slack, but not all projects will use slack. Um, so with that said, obviously getting ourselves back onto the track for the resource allocation. Um, just go back real step real quick, Phil. Um, I just want to talk about, so as we're building this out, you know, we're, we're working on it. We're, we open this up as part of the resource review. And, you know, one of the things that we're trying to determine, obviously, is that if, if, a, if an over allocated resource um, is the person that's being committed to this project, you know, we need to identify that person as a potential barrier and that they may not necessarily themselves be the person who can be on the project, right? That's something of note. Um, and this gets back to one of the first things that we had in our early assumptions and and resource allocation is that we kept going back to the well with the exact same people always. Um, and the idea is that we're trying to get away from that and obviously push push some available work to other teammates that have the capacity to take on work. Okay. So um, middle, middle of that project intake process, I, I spoke briefly a little bit on the, the resource review process. So once it's already been approved by this, the senior leadership, it goes to the team leads um, and the team. And then we go ahead and we take a look at the entire resources and we make the decision to approve and, and assign based upon availability who's available to work on that project based upon that estimate calculator. And if there's any additional questions that need to come up, then they would go back to the senior the senior team, the, the team requesting the project uh, before it goes over to our CIO for final approval. And then within our project, obviously to continuing across our board of our project life cycle, we obviously move our project then into execution, where then we're actually then managing the project and you know doing the actual set tasks uh, that are defined within scope. And then we're closing out that project all the resources themselves then are returned back to the resource pool. We would complete a lessons learned. We would close a project out formally. Um, and then we would notify the senior leadership of the of success or the failure of that project and any sort of takeaways from that. Obviously though, as in any project, right? Not everything is 100% defined as we expected, right? You're driving down that road and all of a sudden there's a road closure and you have to go a different way. Um, and that's where we end up end up building into our project change request process. So and obviously a project change request happens, you know, thoroughly, maybe often in, in many projects, and those can be based upon a scope change. Resources need to be added, additional additional slack may need to be added, right, due to, due to the fact that like the proposed initial slack happens, a timeline, a holding of a project. So many of those factors come into play and, and we bring project change requests into that. One of the items that we also do as part of the project change request is any sort of project change request that happens that does involve um, resources, whether it's extending resources, changing resources, reducing resources, we bring that to the team leads and that's reviewed as part of that resource review meeting on a weekly basis. So solution. Now we, we spoke about how we did that, how we, we talked about what we've done before in the past. Let's talk about what we've actually done within Team Dynamics to help manage this. So the only person to turn to in this event is Darth Vader because he, he's a great leader and he's been able to do so much over the course for the Empire. No, truthfully, um, there, there actually exists a field actually within Team Dynamics that we've used called user's capacity. Or, or daily capacity, actually, what it is, um, and it's something that from a from the back end, the team administrator is actually able to manage and update. So we've gone ahead and we've actually enabled this functionality within Team Dynamics here at ITAC. And what we've done is we've set a daily capacity field of how much time that individual resource is available to work on projects. So if you remember, we went back a previous couple slides. We broke down our breakdown of all the resources here at ITAC into three buckets. We talked about keeping the lights on, KTLO, operations support time, and project time. So if I look here at Darth Vader, we said that Darth Vader is available to work 60% of his available time on operations support, 40% of his available time to work on projects. So within a seven and a half hour workday, he has five and a half hours of available each day to work on everything. 40% of that is 2.2 hours. So 11 hours a week. So within... The software, um, 
our, our TDX administrators would go in and within that daily capacity field, enter in 2.2 so that that's the available number of hours that they could go ahead and use. With that, we then would then take a look at our actual projects. And within the actual projects of, within Team Dynamics, there is a field, a drop down on the left-hand side called resources. And, and we're utilizing the resources to a project where the number of resources that person is assigned to. If you go back and you remember our, our project request estimate calculator, we had a, a high level list of number of hours that, that person was assigned to. We had a start and end date for our project, what that person's name was, that person's role, and how much time that that person then was assigned to get their tasks done. Obviously, you know, we recognize that when it, when it, if it, for example, it might be a DBA on the project, maybe all of their work and the setup of the database, the initial setup is all done, you know, very the beginning, the first maybe month or two of the project, and then near the end, near the rollout of the production environment, you know, maybe there's some turnover uh, to set up and create, establish the production, roll out the, the drop over and, and complete it out. But for the life of the actual overall project, we've taken those hours and we've spread them across to sort of um, to roll out across that board. So, for example, if, if this project manager is assigned to this project, this project itself is a four month project, you know, there are 40 hours of work, that 40 hours of work is spread out across the length of that four months. Within the software of, of Team Dynamics, there is then a couple different reports within the resource management tool that allows us to go out there and actually review and see um, what work is assigned to this said individual, what once that person's set up for, and what projects that person may or may not be assigned for. So in, in the screenshot here example, you can see that the 70.42 hours that, that is making up that one category, that individual resources, 55 hours is, is attributed to the Banner OLA project, nine hours is, is based upon an IPASS implementation and SOC 2 type 2 project, they're assigned to 6.2 hours for that month. So within that, now that we've gone ahead and we've actually gone ahead and we've assigned all the hours by project to each individual person, we've gone in and we've set the daily capacity of the available number of hours for projects, we now can go ahead and we can look at reports. And within and within the reports, one of the main standard candid report standard standard reports within team dynamics that we're utilizing is the availability by resource project report. And this report allows you to go in using the filters to filter out by month, uh, set, set timeline, or actually just take a look at the over allocated associates to see who's available and who's not available and, and how much time that they are or aren't are indicated. And the one thing I wanna just show and highlight here on the, on the screenshot is anybody that's listed here in red, and I listed out their names in black just for to not call anybody out who's here in ITEC, it's over allocated. But um, you know, those are the individuals that have pro that that have that have pr more time attributed to their current existing project bucket than what we previously allocated them to work on. Um, and obviously, anybody that appears in black, that's available capacity. So when it came to resource review, if I were to look and say, "Oh, this person currently has 12 hours of availability in the month of May," can they go ahead and add on this additional project? And the answer would be yes or no. Um, and then we would go ahead and assign or not assign that person. On that, what we've started to do as well now within the next step is we start to build out these monthly reports and start to report them both to team leads and to senior leadership on a monthly basis. So with the team leads, what I've done is I've gone out and I've created an over allocation report that lists out the individual person's name, um, their current existing breakdown for that month, how many, what their current percentage is over, how much of that percentage is made up, how many hours are they over. And then we've left a field comment for notes and sign off. And, and what we, our process we've done is on a monthly basis, usually the first or the second of the month, depending on the, uh, the day that the first or second falls on, we, we, I reach out, I, I run this, I generate this report based upon with, with, within the software. And I send out this over allocation report to all of the team leads where that individual's current workload is currently over their current capacity. Um, the team lead will then go ahead and actually meet with their individual teams, like whether in a weekly one-on-one -on -one session or as needed, and, and, and talk to them about their, their current workload when it comes to iTech projects. 
And then if they're okay with it and the individual themselves are okay with it, they will come back into this report. They will initial and, and make any sort of additional notes or anything. <laughs> We've come across individuals where the team lead themselves may come back to the individual and the individual might say, yes, you know, I'm, I, I'm over allocated. I can't get the work done. There's just too much going on. And then that team lead will go ahead and say, no, this is a concern. We've then taken it to the point where myself and Phil, I mean, usually the, the, the team lead and maybe the individual or somebody else within the, the, the management team here at iTech will meet, we'll take a look at that person's workload and we will determine whether or not any of their work can be moved over to somebody else. You know, is there is is there something that needs to come off the plate and this can go on to somebody else available or or there's, you know, maybe, maybe they're okay or not. In addition to that, yeah. what we've also, go ahead, Phil. Oh, thanks. I, I just wanted to mention, so part of the reason we do this, um, part of the reason we have this check-in is because there are two options in Team Dynamics for how to uh, report time for a project. You can do uh, time for total project, which is what Jason was saying, where you say, okay, well, this person has four, 40 hours worth of work over eight weeks of, of duration. Or there's a more granular one, which we didn't choose to use, which is you can do uh, resource by plan, where you put the resources in um, at every task. And there are some drawbacks for it um, in terms of um, how much work it takes to put it in, to get it into the plan and like the timeline and uh, how much work it takes to maintain. And so we made the, uh, we made the decision early on that we would manage resource by project. And so because of that, and because of the way project schedules work, on a given week, even if somebody's over allocated, they may not have any task work on you know, several of their projects, or worse, they have task work on every one of their projects. Um, and so that check-in is to ensure that what we're not accounting for in schedule is being accounted for, um, not quantitatively, but qualitatively by checking in with the person who's, you know, who's been assigned to all that work. Yeah, back to you, Jason. Thanks, Phil. Great. <laughs> the, no, it's perfect. So the, the other thing that we started to do here at iTech as well is then we started to go ahead and we started to look at this from a, to a senior leadership point standpoint. And if anybody's familiar, obviously, you know, with the senior leadership team, we're trying to provide them an overarching view of, of iTech's projects for overallocation and everything at, a, at a, you know, the 30,000 foot level. So how many individuals across the board are currently overallocated? what departments are currently overallocated they've, they've requested and they've asked for some form of trending reports how many how many individuals themselves are um, how many times has this department been overallocated when do they look to come off of it um and and that and those conversations have really started to help us here at itmac take a look at our different departments and, and and ask us whether or not do we have enough resources within that department or you know maybe are we short in one specific department where we can bring on an additional resource to help help that. And as we start to now go ahead and move into 2025 planning and, and what we're looking to accomplish across the board as an organization, um, do we have the existing resource with the existing approved projects that are ongoing? And do we have the right people so that we can go ahead and take and accomplish this goal as, as an organization because we know that we have the people to do the work. So those are really good conversations that we've been having with our senior leadership. Um, and we're continuing to evolve and, and build out these additional reports to them to give them exactly what they need. Okay. So obviously with all that said, this is all great and everything and, and everything, but what are some of the recommendations that we would recommend if, if we were to if, if we're if we were to take on this additional work, right? Um, obviously. The, the first one that I've listed there in bold is, is pretty set standard, right? Overallocated resources should not be assigned to new projects. Um, you know, this gets back to, you know, going back to the same one or two people for always to back to the well. Um, Overallocated resources really should be able to work directly just on the work that they have within themselves. And, um, you know, the portfolio manager should really go to a different resource department to try to find somebody. And if they, if they can't, and if it's really needed this person, then there might need to be some sort of change out or adjustment to existing work that they might be assigned to. 
Uh, team leads will, you know, review the resources to make the decision, like I said, to, to keep them out. Um, team lead is recommended to review the workload on a weekly basis, obviously, with their team to make sure that that person is, is as needed. And then obviously, as needed, team leads should review the workload and reprioritize that work on a weekly basis to make sure the highest tasks are being included. What we've started to do as well with an iTech, and we're beginning the process of rolling this out, is we've started to put into place a couple of factors as far as our project requests. So as new project requests are reviewed, we are um, we are putting a, a priority field onto those. Um, one of the things that I don't actually have here on the slideshow, but I do want to call out, um, and it, it's good of note, is that those additional numbers that we broke down, we were talking about three different buckets, the KTL load, the operations, and the support, and the project management time. Currently at iTech, we started to review those current breakdowns on a, uh, on a semi-annual basis, so twice a year. Um, we found that to be successful. One of our departments we found to be actually over-allocated. They were constantly showing up on our reports. Phil and I met with the team lead. We said, you know what, we may need to, if we're going to commit this amount of work, these, these, these three or four individuals continually to projects, we may need to adjust on our back end what their daily capacity fields are. So we went ahead and we did that. And what we've noticed now is that the project work is remaining the same, it's reflected correctly in the reports, and they're no longer showing over allocated, and they're still able to get all their KTLO and services work done at the same time. So um, we started to review those and we'll continue to review those. And as new projects continue on, if we need to make any adjustments and, and how often we're reviewing those, that breakdown between those two different categories, um, we, we'll do so. So um, I think that's almost all of it. I think we just have a couple more wrap up slides here. Yep. So wrapping up, um, that's me. That's me. That's my three kids. It's the one time I was on Sports Center for crying on national television. You can ping me a question. And I'll tell you all about it. I like to tell that story. But you can also find me on LinkedIn. Um, and then, then our next friend is Phil. Um, as you mentioned, that's Phil. He's uh, He's been here at iTech for 14 years in the project management role. Um, and, and that's how that's our presentation for the day. Um, we appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time at eleven o'clock on a Thursday to join Phil and I on this. And if you guys have any questions for us, please uh, please let us know. Thank you so much, Jason. Please, does anybody have any questions? We would love to hear what your questions are on this topic. Deb says thank you. Next step. Yeah, okay. Hi, thank you so much. It was very, very interesting. Um, we have a project management okay. office here at City Empire and we're constantly working to mature our organization. I was wondering how long did it take you and how focused were you when you developed this process? Was it something you developed um, as you continue to roll at T TDX, or did you really focus on trying to get it right the first time? So, Phil, you could speak on the history more than I can, but sure. so we, we, re we, we really try, I think, to do it uh, right the first time. What uh, we, we really didn't have anything. We knew what people were assigned to. We were able to see some things, but nobody was really committed to actually watching this on a weekly basis or, or overall. Um, and we recognized that we needed somebody within this role here in iTech to sort of be the overseer from a resource management perspective. Um, so I think one of the things that when when Phil and Ralph and Krista had requested to senior leadership that, hey, we, we, need, we need more help from a project standpoint, I think Don and, and Mike also recognized that we needed somebody to do that. So when I came on last, last March, almost a year and a half ago, we we created that initial high level crazy spreadsheet that sort of gave us that tracking. And from within yeah. there, uh, Kay, we were able to actually see what was working and what wasn't working for us. And then we treated this as just part of the items when we implemented Team Dynamics last year um, as this is how we're going to do it. And we, we built it out. Phil, I'm sure you can add more to that. Yeah, so just before, so just before we hired Jason, um, Ralph and I were, we had sat down one day and said that we really need to try to put our arms around this somehow. And that's how we got into the spreadsheet. And the thing that we were fighting with, um, with the spreadsheet was 
in all things um, reporting, right? There's a there's a balance between um, how granular and you know how granular or accurate this data is um, versus how hard is it to maintain, right? If it becomes too hard to maintain and you don't keep up the maintenance on it, then the data goes stale and then everyone ignores it, right? Forever, they'll just forever ignore it because it's like, oh, that data is not you know perfect or whatever. So we were we were working on the spreadsheet, and then at the same time, we knew we were going into Team Dynamics. And so one of the first things we did when we got a peek um, at our test site was we went and looked at resource allocation and um, were relieved to find out it had pretty much the same philosophy we had, which was, hey, I think if we break people up into buckets, we you know we could figure out like how much time each person should be working in each bucket. And then because TDX did that so easily and had the canned reports, um, I would say we got like probably 60% of what we wanted right from just implementing TDX. And then we're still in the process of working out the our own in-house policies for how to manage it. Like we have data and now it's like, okay, well now we have to make decisions on data. Um, and we got... Early on, we got everything squared away with the team leads. And then we've been our where we've been working now is with senior management. We just we've been having a series of meetings with them like once a month where we've just been um, literally throwing spaghetti at the wall. We've been showing them different reports and being like, does this answer or prompt any questions from you? Do you like this? Do you want like what what are you not seeing? And after a few rounds of that, like I think we've narrowed down a set of reports where they're like, oh, okay, this is good. Like we're, we're getting to see things that we would like to see um, and are starting to ask us questions that we can say, okay, great, let us go. We'll go and dig deeper into that and come back with some stuff. So it's gonna be, I, I would say we're probably 90% there. And then that'll, I don't know if we'll ever get past it being about 90% right. Um, the rest of it is just kind of, um, just we got to do it a bunch to see what's going to work, what's not going to work, and then um, just make those small adjustments as we, you know, figure it out as we go. Great, thank you for that information. By the way, we, all the projects that we work with you on with iTech on, we feel are go fabulously. So you're obviously doing something right in this area. Oh, thank yes. you. Any other questions? We've got the experts here. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Jason and Phil, so much. We really appreciate your time. I know you guys donate a lot of time to this community of practice, and we really do appreciate it. Uh, just a, one more plug. I know Phil and Jason are planning on doing something at Wizard on project management. Uh, so if you haven't registered for Wizard yet, definitely do so. Uh, it'll be in the second week of November. Uh, if you haven't seen it, there's been lots of announcements out on the listservs. I know that Deb McClendon and I will be there as well. We'll be talking about the co-mentoring program too. So uh, definitely come and join. It'll be a good time. We always have can fun. I plug that for Can I plug that for just one second? Sure. Sure. So the session that we're going to do is, um, actually, we're doing two sessions. We're going to actually do uh, this session that you saw uh, so we're just going to do that one because um, the same people who go to SDC aren't always the same people who go to Wizard. But the other um, session that we're going to do is a birds of the feather. So rather than uh, giving a talk, uh, we're just going to gather, you know, all the PM minded people uh, for a session and open it up for people to ask questions, uh, show off things that they've, you know, that they've done. You know, it's a chance for people to brag about projects that they've um, accomplished or, you know, ask questions to the general group of people. We're going to be there to facilitate it, but it's really a session for anyone who's got, uh, who wears the project management hat either fully or, you know, partially. That sounds awesome. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I hope the weekend is as nice for you as it looks like it's going to be for us here in the Syracuse area. Have a nice night everybody. Thank hey guys, you, thanks.